And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 in the NASDAQ 100 for Sunday, November the 6th, 2022. The markets initially gapped down at the start of uh, Globex this afternoon slash evening. And now is looking like it wants to try to go and fill that gap that it just created. So let's kind of just kind of dive in and talk about what's going on and what has now come out that actually, I think, caused that little bit of a gap that we had to begin the session today. Uh, there has been news that Apple is now warning against uh, supply and demand problems and the fact that there's a supply uh, that they're unable to get the iPhone 14 uh, Pro Max and Pro uh, delivered. And it's a problem, a little problem with China. And so that likely is going to have an effect on the stock uh, come tomorrow. And it actually may have been part of what was going on on uh, Friday for expiration, that when the stock just kind of nosedived all the way down to uh, 134 and some change. So we got that plus uh, Meta, Metaverse, is sending out emails uh, letting employees know that uh, massive layoffs are about to begin. So everybody's getting the heads up and now they're all going to have to sit around and worry to decide uh, who's going to go and who's going to stay within Metaverse slash Facebook. So a couple of negative things coming out. Plus, uh, we continue to just grapple with, is the Fed going to pivot? Are we going to have a Santa rally, et cetera, et cetera? Talk, talk. Uh, my own personal opinion is, is like, no. I don't. I, I think we're going to have rallies, but to think that we're just going to have an extended rally between now and the end of the year, simply because that's the way it always goes, and we always have a Santa rally, and they always mark things up, um, may come as a disappointment. Now that doesn't say that that we. I'm definitely saying I'm calling it off, but I think that the that the scale is slanted for it to be extremely muted, and likely just kind of beneficial on a on a much much smaller scale. But we'll see. Now, also, the market continues to grapple with what are we going to do with uh, bonds? What's going to happen with inflation? So what are rates now going to do? Will the Fed you know, actually come out and pivot? And so there's, of course, a lot of talk. And really what a lot of that talk is now leaning against is the fact that the Fed may uh, raise the level, the, the goal, the target for inflation, um, what would be acceptable to them and us uh, from 2% to 3%. So, but there's, that's kind of now they're talking about maybe 2024. So it's, first of all, we need to get through all of this. So a lot of this talk about uh, the Fed pivot and the Fed doing a lot of things and interest rates kind of slowing down, it seems to almost be, and I agree, that it's like an impossible mission right now. And a lot of that, I believe, is due to um, many different things. But if we take a look at some of the stuff that the, the biggest one that, that came um, from Michael Hartnett from Bank of America, and he is the hot ticket right now. He's, he's very spot on. He, he has some great insight to what's going on. Um, but so he's actually putting out saying that it's, it's gonna be hard for the Fed to pivot when inflation is 8% and above, and then unemployment is 3%. And if you remember, it's like back on, on Friday when we got the employment situation numbers, it really showed that people are getting jobs. People are going back to work. People are you know, able to earn money. And that's inflationary, pure and simple. It's inflationary. But it is good news in the way that people are going to work, people are being able to make money, and therefore that they're not going to be claiming unemployment, taxing the system, et cetera, et cetera, that they're able to contribute to the economy versus get something paid out to contribute to the economy. So, but it, but Michael Hartnett also makes a very clear point that it would be much easier to pivot when unemployment is 8% and inflation is 3%. So in other words, it's like right now it's kind of backwards. So it's switching it around. And that would 
please the Fed and bring things into into closer to their target, but they're going to have to raise the target, basically. And also things that think we need to be understanding is that it's pretty much baked in and not necessarily in terms of how prices are going to react, um, but the fact that that the country is headed into a recession or the global economies are heading into recessions. And so what Hartnett is also talking about is that that recession and a credit event is going to be needed to end the tightening. So, you know, and at that point, we would turn and start an upward move. Now, all of this continues to kind of talk about the market continuing to move lower. And I think that the market may continue to move lower uh, into the end of the year. I think we're going to have pockets of rally like we're having right now in terms of, you know, we we came down, we made a low, we rallied into expiration. So that type of a, of a deal, we will have up moves. But I think it's going to continue to follow an Elliott path. Now, starting with the S&P, I think it's interesting that we got a, this create we get a lot of these crazy moves they they are tending to kind of possibly interrupt uh how all of this wants to get counted and it just drives me nuts when my computer does this so let me go back over and start over and go like that because what i want to talk about see we've got that one there and they got a couple of them and so i want to go and we're going to look at the line chart all right. First of all, we had that big spike up here. Uh, let me go back so I can show that again. The candle. We had this spike. We had this actually spike down. This is a spike up. And it kind of presents us with a confusing situation. It's like, well, what the heck is it? What's going on? What's the count? And these are extremes. And when I go over and I take a look at the line chart, which is a closing basis, then it can become very clear as to what we just did. So there's the high from November 1st. And then one, two, three, four, five, those are minute to form minor wave one. Remember, if we're in this intermediate third wave, it's going to consist of five waves of minor degree, minor one, possibly minor two, possibly We'll get into that in just a second. And that continues to leave us with stronger downside yet to come. Now, against a marketplace that's kind of looking for the start of this Christmas rally, this year-end rally, and that's the part where I'm like, I'm not sure that that's really going to happen. And it may turn into that funds and, and, and players are going to be looking to get out of positions because of the year-end and take what they're going to have to take. So there could be, I mean, a lot of tax, uh, tax selling. We don't know. So back to the count. So when I clean it up a little bit in terms of just putting it on the line chart, so I can take it back to the candle and we can take a peek that if we're going to use wave two. Now, again, when I'm using Fibonacci's, I often will go and include not, not all these types of extremes, but if it's extreme on a bar that it's a turn, then I may. That'll usually take it up to there. Give us a little bit cleaner uh, fibs. Now, so if indeed we this is the end of minor wave two, so we get an A, a B, and a C, then the drop, including the gap, which is now they're working on trying to boost themselves back up and fill it, um, Start to let us know maybe it's another one, two, and now we're really going to start to drop. That's not included. But we have the Asian markets that are going to open in 50 minutes. So it's totally unclear. But we need to leave open the potential that wave two isn't done. And if that's the case, let me go back out and come on, get out of the way. Yeah. God. Uh, my apologies with this crazy thing not wanting to work. I just want to go back out and take off this. I'm going to remove
remove that and because we're now going to go for what could be wave two. And those are going to be retracements. So I take off the extension and I go into the retracements. And where if wave two is still in progress, what we've done is A, this is still, and I best counted as an ABC up. So that could be wave A, this is going to be wave B, or B is still in progress. And then we're going to get a C wave that could go take us back to uh, 3820. So we got resistance, 50% resistance, 3816. We've got the uh, hourly uh, 200 period SMA. That's the EMA, the SMA at 3831. And then we've got 618 at 3842. And that may... If wave two is going to continue to go up, that would be logical places for it to kind of top out, turn, and start to come down as the marketplace starts to pay attention to you know, what is going to be hitting us in terms of corporate news. Okay, so that would be covering us on the upside. And then if we continue and don't fill that gap and we just continue to gap lower, then again, we're looking at putting in extensions for wave three, minor wave three. So that takes us from the top where wave one began to the bottom where wave one completed up to the top of wave two. Now, 100%, minor wave three would be 100% of minor wave one at 3582. What's going to be juicier? 3529 down to 3500 would be my, my take. And then we're likely going to get a minor four, and then we get a minor five. And then we're likely going to start to complete this, this intermediate third wave. But we're down now closer to 3,000 more than likely. At least maybe 32, 33, somewhere down in here. There's going to be my, my estimate as it starts to unfold, we'll be able to narrow and pull those numbers together a little bit cleaner. But I am now still expecting additional downside. We may get the upside first, but I'm not thinking that the market is going to turn more bullish and just kind of really start to power higher and get itself above uh, 3,900. And that would be above that 3,928 uh, high that we saw last week. Okay, over to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is a little bit more tricky, I got to tell you. The NASDAQ's got this... It, plowed down to new lows after the employment situation numbers and then rose up to the highs after the employment situation. It was quite the crazy uh, couple of hours there because I'm on the hourly chart. But I am going to go down now. On this one, I, I'm actually counting it the same because here as well, when you drop it down and you put it on the hourly chart, it's all, oh, okay, it fits. But I'm going to tell you how I do still find it strange. Because if I'm marking wave one at this low, right, at about seven, uh, 10 o'clock on Thursday, or yeah, Thursday, if I'm marking it at that low, then I've got a new low in, in a wave B, and then an additional, this could be one, two. So, but it, it comes down and it's not clean. So this is this high right here, but this takes us to a new low. So this is this could be, and again, I'm going to take it out of here. I'm going to put it back in the other one to show you how it can be. Look at that. Bing, 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 bing. So what is what? What what really comes in here? And this one does show. This one is the closer's way up here. So it's very confusing. And so I'm I'm putting what I feel is best. And what what also could be in play again is the same deal that if wave two, minor wave two, is not yet complete, then it does stand the chance that we're going to rally all the way back, get ourselves back above 10,975 and upwards towards 11,100. Or just above 11,000 would, would take care of it as well. But again, we got some greater pressure coming in from corporate side on a couple of the stocks that everybody probably would have to guarantee they're going to rally if indeed the entire NASDAQ is going to try to move. Um, right now, may not be the case. Um, also, also what we do have, the massive run in NVIDIA, 
and NVIDIA, oh, it's a week. It was 11 on the 16th. So they can continue to futz around. So, But I'll tell you what, it could drop like a stone just as quickly as it rose. And that will have an effect. So the chips, everything's going to come back into play now that we're out of expiration. Within the NASDAQ itself, it's been the weak link. There's been a lot of shifting going into, into uh, mid-cap from tech. So, you know, just a place to put the money in there because it won't decline as heavy or I don't know, whatever the, whatever the thought process is. Um, but the NASDAQ has been the weakest of, of our markets at the moment. And we'll, I think that that may continue. Any kid, here in the NASDAQ, what I really do think for tomorrow is that we, we could have continued upside. Let's just take a quick peek. Let me put those up and then we'll be able to decide on... Uh, some levels, some possibilities, parameters, and it would be for the entire wave two. So again, I'm not going to go all the way down to that bottom because I figure that's a part of two. Um, but what it can do is we have 11,054, 11,161. And that's and then we have that uh, 200 period EMA at 11,148. So I'm going to say 11,150 on that. Right now, we got to get back above the 50s. And right now, the 50 SMA on the hourly basis, which is at uh, 10,828, is holding. So now let me drop this down to the 15 minute. We can take a peek at what's happening inside here. So here's the gap thing. And now we're doing basically nothing, just kind of hoping somebody's going to give us direction. And I'll tell you, this looks very like three wave ish now, doesn't it? So maybe it'll just pick up and it'll start to drop again. And then Asia opens and it really kind of gives us a kick. And we go back to the other levels that I just gave. So these would be, again, upside levels. If indeed we've got the strange two still in play. And at this case, I can't say for certain. So we're going to have to rely on the market. Um, and that's going to be about it for today. We're going to have to wait and see. My my own personal feeling is that we will continue to move lower. In the NASDAQ, we will continue to move lower. And a lot will depend on what else wants to go down along with uh, Apple. If it goes down at more broadly as, as uh, the entire sector, and then yes, I think that we could be dropping below uh, 10,006. What was that low? 646 or something like that. Uh, 36, 10,636. We drop below there. We drop below uh, 10,600. We start heading for 10,005. And then ultimately, we will, I believe, during this whole sequence, drop below um, 10,000. So, but we're going to keep track of that as it rolls out. That's going to be it for right now. And our next update is going to be on Monday, November the 7th.